Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our last video, we discussed how to integrate JMeter with Jenkins. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will explore different JMeter elements that helps us to control the throughput. So let's get started right away. First, let's try to understand what is a throughput. We have already covered this in detail in our performance testing core concepts module. However, let's quickly recap. It is the amount of data successfully processed within a specific time frame. In other words, the number of requests executed per unit of time. To calculate the throughput, we can divide the number of requests by the total time. Okay? It is a crucial metric we validate in all performance test executions. If the system doesn't meet the expected throughput, we must investigate the root cause. You might be thinking, what will happen if we don't control throughput in performance test executions, right? Without controlling throughput, the test environment may not accurately simulate real-world scenarios. This can lead to invalid results as the system may not experience loads and traffic patterns that reflects actual usage. Throughput is a key performance metric and its uncontrolled variability can lead to inaccurate measurements. Fluctuations in throughput make it challenging to assess the true performance characteristics of the system under consistent conditions. Throughput control is essential for gradually increasing the load on the system, helping performance test engineers identify performance bottlenecks. Without this control, critical bottlenecks may go unnoticed, making it difficult to optimize the system effectively. Like any other performance testing tools, we have some elements that can help us to control throughput in JMeter. And they are throughput controller, weighted switch controller, constant throughput timer, and throughput shaping timer. Weighted switch controller and throughput shaping timers are plugins, and we may need to install them using the plugin manager. Okay, now let's execute different scenarios with these elements for a better understanding of these elements usage. Okay. So the first element in our list is throughput controller. Basically throughput controller control the execution amount for its child request. For example, in a script, if a specific sample request is getting executed 100 times and based on the throughput requirement, if we only want to execute it to 50 times, then we can use the throughput controller to achieve the targeted throughput. Okay. Now let's add the throughput controller and understand the process of achieving the target throughput. Okay. To add a throughput controller, we need to have a thread group. So select the thread group, right click, add and then select logic controller and then select throughput controller okay so in throughput controller same like other elements we have name and comments configuration options with which we can define a meaningful name to this throughput controller and also add some additional information about this throughput controller okay and then we have based on parameter which has two options total executions and percent executions so the total executions means whenever we select this option and then specify the throughput requirement then what JMeter will do is it will execute the child elements of this throughput controller based on the throughput requirement mentioned in the throughput section okay for example if the sampler is getting executed 100 times and if we select based on as total execution and then throughput specified as 50 then jmeter will only execute all the child elements of this throughput controller 50 times okay and we have percent executions here we will specify throughput in terms of percentage so that jmeter will make sure that all the child elements of this throughput controller will only get executed based on the given percentage okay and then we have per user if we select this option and we'll try to execute the script then what jmeter will do is it will try to target the given throughput for each individual thread okay now let's add a sampler element to thread group level and then first we will execute it without throughput controller and then we will add throughput controller and then we will understand how throughput control is helping us to achieve the target throughput okay so let's disable the throughput controller and then select the thread group add sampler and then select dummy sampler so the reason for selecting the dummy sampler is just to avoid the application dependencies okay and then let's add a listener to view the results so go to listener and then select summary report so that we can see how many number of samples are getting executed okay so let's rename the dummy sampler as login and then go to thread group and then see what is the current property so right now i have number of threads as 10 loop count as 10 that means each thread will try to execute the samplers 10 times so we have 10 threads and each thread will execute 10 times that means overall 100 sample requests will be executed when we run this script so let's save the script and run it and go to summary report and then see whether we have 100 samples so we have 100 samples right now we will add throughput controller and then limit the number of samples based on the requirement so enable the throughput controller and then move this login sampler as a child element of this throughput controller now let's go to based on property select total execution and then select throughput as 30 so that means irrespective of total number of requests we want login samplers to be executed only 30 times so in the current configuration jmeter 
will try to execute all the requests under this thread group for 100. Since this login is part of this throughput controller and then we have a target throughput as 30, then Jmeter will only execute this login for 30 times. Okay, so let's save it, clear the results and run the script. Now we can see the login samplers are only executed 30 times. So in real time, the way we will have a requirement is like login has to be executed certain number of TPS and then account summary certain number of TPS and then transfer certain number of TPS. Okay, so this is the total target throughput and this throughput is distributed among different functionalities. For a demonstration purpose, just assume that these are the number of samples to be executed. Okay, so we have so we have to execute login 150 times, then account summary 90 times and then transfer 60 times. Okay, so let's go back to JMeter and then add multiple throughput controller and then rename the sampler name as account summary and the another one as trans okay so based on the requirements login has to be executed 150 times and then account summary has to be 90 times and then transfer has to be 60 times okay so when we are defining this kind of throughput requirement we also need to make sure that the total number of request that Jmeter is going to be executed is more than what we have in the throughput requirement. So here the total target samples is 300. So if we go back to thread group properties, here we specified number of threads as 10 and loop count as 10. In real time, we are not going to use loop count. We will be mostly doing using the duration basis. Since to understand this demonstration, we will try to increase the loop count to 40. So that means Every thread will try to run all the samplers for 40 times unless or until we have any throughput controller and if they have any other throughput requirements. In this thread group we have three throughput controller and every throughput controller has a different throughput requirement. Okay, so let's clean up the results and then run the script. Now once the test execution is done we will see login 150 times account summaries 90 times and then transfer 60 times. See? We have login sampler executed 150 times, account summary executed 90 times, transfer executed 60 times. So the total number of samples is 300. This is what exactly we need to achieve. Okay. So using throughput controller, you can meet different throughput requirements. Okay. And the second element in our list is weighted switch controller. So this weighted switch controller is not a default JMeter element. It's a plugin developed by BlazeMeter. So to make use of the plugin, we need to make sure that plugin is already installed in our system. So to install any plugins, we need to go to options and then plugin manager. Here you have to go to available plugins and then look for that plugin. I already installed that weighted switch controller plugin in the system. Okay. Once you install this plugin, let's close this plugin manager and then right click thread group add logic controller and then select weighted switch controller. Okay. Now what we will do is we will move all these samplers as a child to this weighted switch controller so that we can understand the process of achieving the target throughput using this weighted switch controller. Okay. So after moving all these elements, let's disable this throughput controller and then go to weighted switch controller. So once we add any child elements, what Jmeter will do is it will give a weight to the child element. By default, all the elements will get 100 as weight. Okay. So if we go back to our requirements here, login has to be executed 150 times, account summary 90 times, transfer 60 and then total throughput is 300. Okay. Let's assume that target throughput of 300 TPS is 100%. Then we can say login is 50% and then account summary is 30% and transfer is 20%. The way we achieve this percentage is we have to divide 150 by 300 and then multiply by 100. So that will give the percentage. So in the total target throughput login is 50% share and then account summary is 30% and the transfer is 20%. So these are the percentage that we need to define in the weighted switch controller. Okay. So let's go back to JMeter and then login is 50% and then account summary is 30% and then transfer is 20%. And the total throughput that we need to achieve 300. So let's go to thread group and then make the loop count as 30. So that means JMeter will run total 300 iterations. So out of 300 iterations, 50% of the iteration should goes to login, 30% has to go to account summary and then 20% has to go to transfer. Okay. So let's clean up the results and then run the script, go to summary. Now we will see the same exact result like login will be 150 times, account summary 90 and transfer will be 60. So this is another way of achieving the target throughput using weighted switch controller. You can either use throughput controller or weighted switch controller. At the end of the day, we need to meet the client requirement. Okay. And the next one in our list is constant throughput timer. So this timer tries to maintain a constant throughput throughout the test and will help us to achieve the target throughput. 
if the server is unable to handle the load then obviously the throughput will be lower okay so let's add the constant throughput timer in the thread group level so that we can define the target throughput and that will be applicable to all the child elements so before adding the constant throughput timer let's try to execute all these three sample requests and then see what is the maximum throughput that we can achieve okay what we will do is we will move these three sample elements to thread group level and let's disable the waiter switch controller and then we will create a situation wherein each sampler will have a response time between 400 to 500 milliseconds okay so the way we can do it in the dummy sampler we have a response time field where they have used a random function which will by default give a response time between 50 to 500 so we need to update this 50 to 400 so that whenever this dummy sampler is getting executed jmeter will have a response time for this dummy sampler between 400 to 500 milliseconds let's copy this and then paste it in all other two samplers as well okay so the reason for changing this response time is just to avoid so much of throughput because when we execute the script without any timers then what jmeter will do is it will try to execute all the samplers without any pauses okay so that will hammer the system i just wanted to avoid that and to have a meaningful response time that is why i have updated the response time configuration so that jmeter will try to have the response time for each sampler between 400 to 500 milliseconds okay now what we will do is go to thread group and then select the loop count as infinite and let's keep the number of threads as 10 so our scenario is here we want to run all these three samplers with 10 threads and then see what is the maximum throughput that they can achieve okay we have different graphs to view those metrics like transactions per second and also we have another useful graph which can help us to understand how many threads are currently active in the system so to get these graphs you need to go to plugin manager and add additional plugins because these are not default elements so go to plugin manager again and look for three basic graphs and five additional graph plugins and then install them okay so after installing you can go to thread group right click add go to listener and then select active threads over time and also add the transactions per second listener so that we can see the data in real time and then in transactions per second graph go to settings and then select aggregated display so that we can see the combined throughput instead of individual sampler throughput now let's save this and then run the script if you go to active threads we can see the number of threads since we specified the number of threads to 10 that is why in the active threads over time we can see the maximum number is 10 okay so initially it started with one and then eventually ramped up to 10 and currently this is running with 10 threads and if you go to transactions per second and go to chart so we can see this is the maximum throughput that we can achieve i think it's between 30 to 35 so with the current configuration this is the maximum throughput that we can achieve now we will stop this test and then we will add a constant throughput timer and then define the throughput requirements okay so let's stop the test because we have selected loop count as infinite it will never stop so that is why we need to forcefully stop the test now right click thread group add and then go to timer and then select constant throughput timer okay we will also keep this throughput timer in the thread group level so that the target throughput requirements will be applicable to all child elements so in the constant throughput timer also same like other elements we have name comments configurations with which we can define a meaningful name to this throughput timer element and then we have a section called delay before each affected sampler so here we need to specify the target throughput and this throughput requirement should be specified per minute so how many number of samples that we want jmeter to execute it in a minute okay so that is the requirement we have to specify here let's say if we specify target throughput samples is 600 in a minute so that means 10 tps let's keep the target throughput as 600 per minute and we also have another parameter called calculate throughput based on and we have some options available like these threads active threads active threads in current thread group all active threads all active threads in current thread group shared so if we select all active threads then what jmeter will do is whatever the target throughput that we have given here will be distributed to all the child elements in all the thread groups however if we select active threads in current thread group then that means this throughput requirement is only applicable to current thread group okay so let's select that current thread group because we only have one thread group even if you select all active thread in the current scenario it will remain the same because we only have one thread group okay now let's clean up the results and then restart the test so if you go back to active threads we have 10 threads and then if you go to transactions per second now the target throughput is 10 tps right earlier the maximum that we were seeing is between 30 to 35 total transactions per second now 
we have added a constant throughput timer and then limit the number of samples per minute is 600 which is equivalent to 10 TPS that is why we are seeing the the results as 10 CPS in the transactions per second graph. So this way we can achieve the desired throughput without hammering the system. Okay. Again let's stop the test and we will look at the final element in this demo which is throughput shaping timer. Again this is a plugin developed by BlazeMeter. If you want to add it to your current test plan you need to install this plugin first. So go to options and then select plugin manager. Look for throughput shaping timer. Since I have already installed that is why that plugin is already showing in my install plugins. Okay once you install close this window and then right click thread group go to timers and then select throughput shaping timer. Okay. So let's disable the constant throughput timer first because we will use the throughput shaping timer to understand how we can achieve the target throughput. Okay. So let's move this to up and let's give a name as TPS timer. So here we need to specify our throughput requirement. So in JMeters they are calling it as RPS which is nothing but request per second. Again this is equivalent to transactions per second. You can call it as a transaction per second or request per second. It's pretty much same. Okay. So here we need to specify the schedule. So the way we do is we need to click add row and then specify the target throughput requirements. We need to tell to JMeter at what RPS rate we want our test to be started and at what rate we want our test to be ended and in how many seconds we need to achieve the end RPS. Okay. So let's say you want start RPS as 5 and then your end RPS is 10 and you want this to be achieved in 60 seconds. You can also think of it as a ramp up. So you want your test to be ramped up with 5 and ramp up should ends with 10. So when you reach to steady state you need to make sure that you are at the 10 RPS rate. Okay. So in your total ramp up duration is 60 seconds. So that is why the graph is showing like this. So initially it starts with 5 requests per second and then it will go to 10 requests per second within 60 seconds. So after reaching 60 seconds then you want to maintain 10 RPS for another 2 hours. So the way you can define that is you can click add row and then specify the start RPS as 10 and then specify end RPS is also 10 because you don't want any additional RPS rate. You want to have the same 10 RPS rate for the next 2 hours. Let's say when you convert 2 hours into seconds that means it is 7200 seconds. And after that we want all the threads to be end. So we don't need to specify that by default once JMeter fulfill the start RPS and end RPS it will stop the test. Okay. Since this is a demonstration and we don't want to wait for 2 hours. So what we will do is we will specify the steady state duration as 60 seconds. Okay. So let's save this, clear the results and then start the test. So in the thread group the number of threads maximum is 10. So if you go to active threads over time, so it started initially with 1 and then it eventually ramped up to 10. Now all the 10 threads are actively running in the system. And if you go to the transactions per second graph, we can see initially it started with 5 TPS. After 60 seconds we will see the RPS rate goes to 10. So now we are at the 40th second. Once it goes to 60 seconds, then we will have the RPS as 10. I think it's almost there. It reached to 10. And then next what we have specified is for the next 60 seconds we want RPS to be started at 10 and also end with 10. We are telling JMeter to maintain 10 RPS rate for the next 60 seconds. So it will not increase anything. So it will try to consistently maintain the 10 RPS requirement. Okay. So the test ran for 2 minutes because the throughput shaping timer configuration we specified initial 60 seconds. We want JMeter to start the RPS at 5 and then ends with 10. And the next 60 seconds we want JMeter to maintain 10 RPS rate. So that's what exactly happened. So if, we, if you see here initially started with 5 RPS and then at the 60th second it reached to 10 and then it maintained 10 RPS rate. Okay. So these are the different elements that we can make use of it and achieve the target throughput. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, please feel free to leave a comment below. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.